ask you this. Do you ever feel like the internet is this vast, untamed wilderness when it comes to your finances? Like one wrong click and poof, your hard-earned money could vanish into thin air. Well, trust me, you're not alone in this. That's why we're here today, to equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to navigate the digital financial landscape with confidence and, most importantly, peace of mind. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. It's Technology Tuesday, and you know what that means. It's time to tackle those tech-savvy finance questions that can sometimes feel like navigating a minefield. If you missed yesterday's episode on finding the best credit card for your needs, be sure to check it out at AskRalphPodcast.com. Today, we're diving headfirst into the world of online banking, bill payments, and those pesky online scams that seem to be lurking around every corner of the internet. We'll also be looking at some handy-dandy apps that can make managing your money online a breeze. Speaking of peace of mind, we got a message from a listener named Brent who's feeling a little anxious about this very topic, and he writes this. Dear Ralph, I've been wanting to switch to online banking for ages. It seems so much more convenient than physically going to the bank every time I need to do banking. But I'm really terrified of getting scammed. There are so many horror stories out there about people losing everything to online fraud. Do you have any advice on how to stay safe while banking online? And are there any specific banks or apps that you recommend? That's signed sincerely, Brent. Well, thanks for reaching out, Brent. Your concerns are completely valid and you're right. There are a lot of bad actors out there trying to take advantage of good people. But don't worry. I'm here to help you separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. You know, the Bible reminds us in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there's safety. And that's what I strive to be for you. A trusted counselor, guiding you through the often complex world of personal finance, all through the lens of our Christian faith. Well, let's dive into Brent's question about staying safe online. Here's some practical steps you can take to protect yourself. Number one, choose reputable institutions. Just like you wouldn't trust your money to a bank with a leaky vault, don't trust your online banking to just anyone. Stick with well-known banks and credit unions with a solid track record of security. Look for institutions that offer two-factor authentication. This adds an extra layer of security by requiring you to enter a code from your phone or email or an app in addition to your password. I always recommend using two-factor authentication so you have an added layer of online security protection. I will also add I'm not a huge fan of getting a text message as a backup, so consider using an MFA app like Duo, Google Authenticator, and there are some other great options. Number two, create strong, unique passwords. I know, I know you've heard this a million times before, but it's extremely important. A strong password is at least 12 characters long and includes a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. And don't use the same password for multiple accounts. It's like using the same key for your house and your car. And look, using password 1234 is just plain crazy. So I would recommend you use a password manager to help you generate and store all those complex passwords securely. You can check out my past episode on great password management, which can really help you manage those complex areas. Again, that's at askroutpodcast.com. Number three, be wary of phishing scams. Not phishing with a hook and a worm, folks. Phishing scams are emails or text messages that try to trick you into giving up your personal information, like your bank account, maybe your social security number. They often look like they're a legitimate email, like your bank or government agency sending you an email. Remember, your bank is never going to ask for your personal information via email or text message. If you receive a suspicious message, don't click on any links or open any of the attachments. Instead, contact your bank or credit union directly using the phone number on the back of your debit card or on their official website. Unfortunately, I've seen many clients who were taken by one of these scams and it does truly decimate your financial life. Number four, keep your software up to date. Software updates include security patches that fix vulnerabilities that hackers could exploit. Make sure your computer's operating system, your web browser, and your antivirus software are always up to date. Think of it like locking your doors and windows. It's a simple step that can make a big difference from protecting your home from intruders. 
I'll also add here to check in on your parents and grandparents when you speak to them and offer to check their devices for them to make sure they're secure and encourage them to ask you for help if they need it. And number five, monitor your accounts regularly. Truth is, I'm seeing many people who check their online accounts daily, and I can't argue with that approach. So I'll recommend that you check your bank and credit card statements regularly for any suspicious activity. If you see something that doesn't look right, report it to your bank immediately. Just last week, my wife and I were doing some online shopping. and we got a call from our credit card company and said, hey, we see a bunch of purchases at Best Buy. Is this you guys? And fortunately, they caught it right away. It was fraud and they shut it down right away. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Immediate reporting in most cases will completely eliminate your risk of loss and it could prevent future issues. Now, Brent asked about specific banks and apps. And while I don't want to recommend any specific institutions, after all, we're all unique individuals with different needs, I can share some features to look for. These are what I call Ralph's top tips of things to look for when selecting an online banking relationship. The first one is this. Do they offer mobile check deposit? This is a lifesaver for busy folks. Simply snap a picture of your check with your phone and voila, it's deposited. I truly can't remember the last time I actually deposited a check at the bank and it's so much easier to simply deposit with a click of your camera. Second thing, do they offer free or low cost bill pay services? It's really time to say goodbye to those stacks of bills and stamps. Many banks and credit unions offer online bill pay, which allows you to schedule payments in advance or even set up recurring payments. This will not only save you time, but in many cases when setting up recurring payments, it may very well save your credit and help you build a better credit score. Just watch the fees they charge for this type of bill payment, but the truth is, most of the services are just a few cents more than a stamp, and when a vendor takes electronic payments, it's even cheaper. As a practice, we certainly encourage all of our clients to set up these electronic payments in their businesses and individually, and it fits most individuals pretty well. Another thing you want to look for, do they have budgeting tools? Yep, Ralph likes to talk about budgets. Remember what gets measured gets done. Some banks and credit unions offer budgeting tools that can help you track your income and expenses, can help you set financial goals, and even categorize your spending automatically. This is a pro tip and a great way not to only have a budget, but automatically have access to some great reporting on your budgeting success and areas to improve. Hey, if they're doing it for you, you can look at it, compare your actual results to your budget. And finally, check out their security features. Look for apps that offer two-factor authentication like we talked about, fingerprint or facial recognition login, and real-time transaction alerts. So we got those calls from our credit card that said, hey, wait a minute, looks like something's going on with your account. These are very commonplace at this point, but take time to read the reviews from actual users and check the internet for security breaches related to the app. This is a place for that buyer beware mindset. You know, I remember when I first started using online banking, I was a bit hesitant. It's like Brent. But once I got the hang of it, I couldn't believe how much easier it made my life. No more rushing to the bank before they closed or waiting in long lines. Plus, the truth is, I felt more in control of my finances because I could see all my transactions in one place. As I've said again, what gets measured gets done. Now let's talk about some of those great apps for managing your online banking. Remember, these are just a few examples and there are many other great options out there. One of them is Credit Karma. This is a popular budgeting app that connects your bank accounts and your credit cards to track your spending and help you create a budget. Another one's called Empower. Now, this was formerly called Personal Capital. It's another great option for budgeting and investment tracking. Then there's YNAB, which stands for You Need a Budget. Sounds like Ralph talking. This app is based on the popular envelope budgeting method and can help you get a handle on your spending and reach your financial goals faster. And the fourth one I came up with was Every Dollar. This created by financial guru Dave Ramsey. This app is a great option for those following his debt snowball method. So there you have it. Hopefully now you feel more confident and informed about navigating the world of online banking and bill payments. Remember this, by taking some simple precautions and choosing the right tools, you can enjoy the convenience and efficiency of online banking while keeping your money safe and secure. And don't forget, our conversation about managing your finances doesn't end here. Tomorrow, we're tackling a question that's on a lot of people's minds, and that's this question. My credit scores drop below 700. What do I need to stop doing right away to improve my credit score? We'll be deep diving into the factors that affect your credit score and exploring practical steps 
you can take to boost those numbers back up. You don't want to miss tomorrow's show. Before you go, be sure to visit our website. It's at askroutpodcast.com and join our email list. When you do, you're going to receive this free copy of my books called Mastering Your Finances. Now, this normally sells for 10 bucks on Amazon, but that's right. It's absolutely free just for joining our community. As always, if you have a question you'd like answered on the show, don't hesitate to reach out. You can send me an email. You can leave a voicemail right on our website or connect with us on social media. We love hearing from you, but more importantly, I love answering your questions. So until next time, stay financially savvy and God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the Ask Ralph podcast. And with the simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. And remember, financial issues don't have to be complicated. Just Ask Ralph. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Saggio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered. 